So uh, I would like uh, to thank the organizers uh, for inviting me uh, to this meeting. Actually, uh, I'm not trained as neurobiologist. Uh, we're just quite new in this field, but uh, things that we do uh, uh, can be broadly referred to synthetic biology. So all good things that now uh, happen to biology uh, come from synthetic biology. So synthetic biology uh, can be described so when, when you take some molecular feature, some molecule from one organism uh, and you place it to another organism to make some, some new property like light dependency, like uh, I don't know, uh, like uh, optogenetics. So they basically here, very uh, classical examples of synthetic biology, optogenetics, when you take uh, some proteins from algae and place them to neurons. Uh, CRISPR-Cas uh, bacterial immunity uh, being placed to mammalian or vertebrate cells uh, enable uh, genetic uh, editing. Uh, actually, fluorescent proteins and techniques based on fluorescent proteins also classical examples. So when you take some uh, proteins from jellyfish or from corals and you visualize processes <coughs> in the living cells. So uh, I will tell basically about thermogenetics, which is extension of uh, of complementary thing to optogenetics. Optogenetics, most of you I think know quite well. So when we take some opsins from algae uh, and you take DNA encoding it, you place it to neurons, and then uh, under irradiation with blue light, or there are some other opsins uh, activatable with other wavelengths. So you, you can basically fire the neurons in vivo. And this gives you an option to modulate uh, behavior of the animal, to study neuronal circuits and so on. And the most uh, known and classical example is channel rhodopsin with a uh, retinal group. So when you activate it with blue light, uh, monovalent ions, uh, mostly uh, sodium, uh, come to the cell and depolarize neuron. And uh, finally, I hope that movie works. So uh, it can lead to uh, some behavior. So, okay, yeah, it works. So when, when those guys activate uh, blue light uh, via optical fiber, so uh, the mouse starts running counterclockwise here. So when the light is switched off, uh, uh, it freezes and uh, turns to normal behavior. And basically uh, here, channel rhodopsin is expressed in motor cortex. Okay, uh, but optogenetics, uh, you know, it's it's very uh, fine field, but not free from uh, several important disadvantages. So first of all, uh, you need uh, blue light, which doesn't permeate tissue very well. So you need optical fibers uh, to activate deep neuronal levels or uh, hypocampal, hypocampus and, and so on. And uh, Actually, the <coughs> conductance of uh, channel rhodopsins are quite low, so you need really overexpress it, and you need to put a lot of light uh, to really activate the circuit. And the problem with light, which is not mentioned usually in uh, optogenetics papers, but very well known to uh, people who do some photonics uh, or uh, biosensors or whatever, so that light is toxic. So uh, in presence of oxygen, light uh, brings phototoxicity. And uh, the more light, the more phototoxicity. And the shorter the light, like blue, uh, light is much more phototoxic than red, for example. So, and this uh, problem uh, uh, for sure exists uh, in optogenetics. And finally, when you apply optogenetical stimulation to, for example, zebrafish larvae or, or drosophila, 
it can see blue light. So it gives you not also uh, with together with specific neural response, it gives you also visual response. And uh, finally, it can lead to some behavior, uh, just vis visual vision dri driven behavior. So alternative to that uh, is thermogenetics. So thermogenetics uh, uh, is uh, use of uh, heat sensitive trip channels. And uh, um, variation of, of that theme is hemogenetics. So when you use to activate these channels, you use chemical substances. Basically, uh, in this audience, I will not tell too, too much about trip channels. There are multiple of them. They sense different temperature ranges from cold to hot. And many of them have uh, some activators like capsaicin, like menthol, whatever. So uh, you can activate them by temperature or you can activate them by uh, chemical substances and uh, some of them can be activated like me by mechanical forces uh, and so on. So in principle thermogenetics was used before to activate uh, circuits in uh, small animals like Drosophila or like zebrafish larva. But what people did, they placed actually the animal to the heating chamber and they uh, heat up uh, uh, the air you know, or, or water. And uh, they activate the entire circuit expressing, for example, Drosophila TRPA uh, channel. And uh, finally, I found, I think the first example of using uh, thermogenetics was in Russia in late 90s. So fear conditioning in humans. So, but now uh, those experiments are prohibited by law. Okay, so, uh, but, oh, but basically both ways have uh, very poor spa spatial and temporal resolution. So you either activate the entire animal or big part of the animal and, uh, and the, the temperate, uh, the, the, the time scale, so you can do that quickly uh, in millisecond scale, like in optogenetics. And therefore, uh, what uh, we were trying to solve this uh, issue with, uh, uh, with our approach. So our components uh, uh, that we suggested, uh, we need ion channel uh, with suitable temperature, we need a, a infrared laser because it penetrates deep, it's not phototoxic and so on, and you need temperature calibration. So first uh, thing, the, the channel, comes from snakes. So rattlesnakes have thermal vision, they have pit organ innervated with neurons, uh, which express highly temperature sensitive uh, trip A channels. And uh, this is very sensitive uh, system, a lot, uh, and uh, the snake uses it to, to uh, localize mouse uh, in dark, for example. Uh, and uh, actually those neurons project, project finally to the visual areas of, of, of the snake brain, so it can really see him. And uh, exactly when we express those channels in hex cells, and incubate at under threshold temperature, then those red bars show that uh, by heating or by uh, uh, chemistry, uh, by chemical agonist, we can activate uh, calcium influx into the cell. Okay, it works, now we go further. So uh, really when we use uh, infrared laser, for example, we need uh, not to overheat tissue, because it's very easy. You turn on the laser and you burn, you cook, in fact, the brain, yeah, even with blue light, but uh, with infrared, uh, it's uh, even easier. So we need some system to precisely calibrate uh, the power of the laser. And uh, here we collaborate with uh, a photonics group uh, led by Alexei Zoltikov in Moscow State University, and they bring us uh, this quantum thermometry probe. So it's a black diamond which is attached to optical fiber and when we pump uh, some visible wavelengths through the fiber, this diamond emits infrared. And we, we, we just need a very weak infrared signal, uh, but 
This metal wire brings also microwave to this diamond. And in presence of microwave, uh, the spectrum of the diamond depends on the temperature. Uh, with very good precision, 0.1 cells degree. So, using this fiber probe, uh, when we place it at the cell, we can uh, measure temperature with high accuracy, and uh, we uh, basically have some calibration curve uh, which allows us not to overheat. So, what we need, we need to uh, activate neuron just by increasing by rapid increase of temperature just one cell degree above uh, its threshold okay now if we uh, use already not heat but uh, heat delivered by infrared lasers in hex cell you can see these red traces uh, are laser uh, intensities and black one is calcium uh, recorded by gcam6 uh, calcium probe in, inside the cell okay it works with uh, infrared, and now we come to neurons. So when we express these snake uh, channels in mammalian neurons, it's mouse hypocampal ne neurons, I think. So uh, this each red uh, trace is a short 8 millisecond pulse of infrared laser. And you can see uh, this black, again, it's a calcium recorded by GCAM signal, and you can see that basically calcium shape reflects very nicely uh, the frequency of infrared laser pulses. So now uh, we were uh, thinking so how fast we can be and how this system can basically substitute channel rhodopsin because channel rhodopsins are fast. So our system is it fast or it is slow? So uh, we, in collaboration with a uh, uh, group of uh, Evgeny Nikitin in Institute of Higher Nervous Activity and uh, Pavel Balaban, so we recorded, uh, we recorded uh, potentials, so action potentials uh, driven by pulsed infrared lasers. So you can see single action potentials uh, actually induced by single pulses. And you can see here uh, with uh, rattlesnake uh, trip, chan trip A channel, 25 hertz and 50 hertz produce phase block response. So it means that uh, we can stimulate at 50 hertz frequency mammalian neurons, uh, and uh, so it means basically that this system uh, very uh, very fast and can be used in very large uh, number of different settings so that control gives you nothing and uh, this slide basically very informative in a way so here we compare electrophysiology electrophysiological recording with uh, calcium recording so simultaneously at the same same cell, same microscope expresses the cell expresses uh, uh, GCAM6, and uh, you can see that on phase of the channel more or less the same. So calcium signal reflects quite nicely on phase, but off phase you can see here that uh, the potential uh, goes to the initial level, but still calcium uh, signal uh, is present there because calcium is pumped out uh, quite slowly and also it needs time to dissociate from the sensor uh, and it gives some kind of uh, residual signal uh, but it gives let's say some impression why we see with calcium signal something like that yeah so uh, each pulse it's it's quite low frequency, one hertz, but still calcium uh, is, is present here. But electrophysiology gives you uh, here much better information on the system. Okay, so finally uh, we were trying to understand if this system works in vivo. And uh, uh, we used zebrafish model and we expressed uh, 
uh, under control of somatosensory sensory enhancer. So we expressed uh, trip A, and the red signal is just uh, red fluorescent protein TD tomator uh, in the same. So it's a marker of expression. So we express the channel, uh, then P2A uh, cleavage site, and then red fluorescent protein. So uh, here you can see labeled neurons. And this is how the entire uh, zebrafish larva looks like. Uh, and this is a uh, comparative size of uh, laser beam that we use. So if you overlay uh, it here, so it means that you can activate uh, one cell or few cells with this size of the laser. And our setup uh, looks like that. So we embed uh, this larva to the agarose. Uh, head is fixed, tail is free. And uh, we illuminate it with infrared laser. Uh, it's, uh, I think, so the, what, what is the variance? So what I call infrared, so quite broad range. So we use something between uh, 1,000 nanometers to 1,500, uh, so, and different wavelengths fit better for different setups. So for, cell, for cells, we use uh, one wavelength for zebrafish and other, so it, it basically depends on uh, the uh, conductivity, permeability of the system to, the, to, to infrared light. So now uh, I hope this movie would work. So. If not, I will just uh, I will just show it from the flash drive. So I hope it would. Okay, maybe not. So uh, I think this one should work. Yeah, this one works. So here we apply infrared. And it makes so-called J-turn, uh, which is a, which is a uh, avoidance behavior. So it's uh, those neurons are somatosensory, so they are responsible for touch sensation. And uh, basically, when we irradiate this uh, fish with short parts pulse of infrared, so we heat up uh, the fish, uh, the local area of the fish, just two cells degrees up and uh, it produces avoidance behavior. So now uh, if we calculate, if we calculate the signal, uh, it looks like that. So, uh, so these are responses of uh, the animals expressing rattlesnake TRPA, this Crotalus atrox TRPA red bar. So you can see that with increase of the laser power, more and more embryos start responding. And there were, there is those two bars uh, represent some uh, some intensity of light where uh, most where almost all expressing zebrafish. Uh, respond, but uh, but uh, wild type zebrafish not expressing snake channels, they doesn't respond. But when then we increase more and more the laser power, so we have responses also from uh, wild type fish because it, it just uh, senses uh, heat, yeah, it, it, it burns. Okay, so what are future directions for that? So we are working now on changing of ion specificity because trip channels are uh, non-selective cation channels. So we now make versions for chloride. We make versions that would permeate uh, only sodium and potassium, but not uh, calcium. Uh, next, actually, thing that we work on, uh, we we search for trip channels with different temperature threshold because what is good for zebrafish with zebrafish we work on with channel uh, which opens at 28 and for mammals uh, we need channel uh, that opens at 39 let's say and uh, finally we found that this tool as it is a very good uh, for shaping calcium dynamics so we are studying now how uh, 
how actually uh, the cell decodes calcium signals. So you can actually, with infrared laser and trip channel, you can draw uh, any shape of calcium inside the cell and you can understand so uh, how they respond to different profiles. So the majority of this work was done by Yulia Yermakova, my PhD student who will defend uh, this material uh, later in this year in May and actually she was really driver of this project and we collaborated also with uh, photonics group of Alexei Zoltikov in Moscow State University they bring us all these infrared photonics, quantum thermometry and so on and for electrophysiology with a group of Evgeny Nikitin uh, including Matvey Roshin and the head of, of the institute Pavel Balaban so thank you for your attention Thank you. Uh, we actually technically have no time for questions, but I can see there is yeah. burning desires. <coughs> okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, thank you for this interesting talk. Uh, when you uh, were talking about thermogenetics, I imagined some uh, application in medicine when you take cells from human, make them transgenic with uh, uh, these channels and emit uh, infrared lasers uh, for for what? Do you have ideas what can be cured with that? Well, let's say <coughs> we... So there is very... It's another direction that we work on uh, and we have now one, one grant uh, actually for that. Uh, you know, optogenetics used for example for heart pacemaking. And uh, when they express channel rhodopsin there, so it's not good because uh, uh, you cannot directly pacemake uh, cardiac myocytes. But sometimes you need that. But with trip channels uh, like that, and with combination with some, I don't know, putative uh, uh, infrared laser device implanted not directly to the heart tissue, but somewhere close, you can actually activate directly cardiac myocytes because they are activated uh, with uh, calcium pumping in. So then. Yeah, maybe something like that. Also, stimulation of beta cells. With neurons, I don't know. So, it couldn't probably substitute channel rhodopsin in visual restoration, but we'll see. So, at least now it's at the same level of accuracy. Thank you very much. Uh, we will have to press ahead. Uh, 